فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحومك الطير تحلق في ثقافات وتنهل من روبا الخير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين My brothers, my sisters I met brother Zafir uh, a few years back in Sri Lanka and he is a member of your community some of you may know him uh, and he kept telling me to come to Melbourne and I kept telling him that I have a very very good friend by the name of brother Harun from the coffee shop called I think it's called the corner store coffee shop if I'm not mistaken and uh, he's been telling me he was the first person to invite me to Australia many years back and that's not the issue. The issue was I had promised never to come to Australia. And the reason is, you know, applying for visas and procedures and whatever, it's a headache, it just puts me off. But Alhamdulillah, my daughter decides to marry somewhere in Australia and SubhanAllah, Allah brought us along. And then I have brother Hafiz who is sitting here on the right with the, uh, is it maroon thok? who also from Sri Lanka has been pushing me a lot. Please come to Melbourne, come to Melbourne, you know. So I thought I have lots of brothers and friends here. And uh, now I have family too, so inshallah I would uh, visit. And uh, the reality is it was very possible to have hired a stadium or something big or a big hall or something, and I chose not to do that. The reason is... You know, I prefer something in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where we're closer, we have something that we can actually uh, consider the, 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 the most blessed of places in that community, you know. So I told Brother Harun, I said, you know, we can just have two uh, times when inshallah we will meet uh, the brothers inshallah and perhaps say a few words. In the meantime, as I'm arriving here, I start getting these requests, one after the other. And I promise you, they probably exceeded 30. Exceeded 30 requests. Now what to do, you know? So you hear the first time, inshallah. Next time, inshallah. There will be a next time, if Allah wills. If Allah wills. And then uh, I decided, subhanAllah, there's brother Ahmed sitting at the back there, also a friend of mine from Zimbabwe, who now settled here in Melbourne. He has been pushing me like crazy. You can't believe it, mashallah. Look, he's smiling now because I didn't say his name, you know. And his name should have been first because since he was a kid, we've known each other, mashallah. So I, I really have to apologize to those whom I was unable to actually respond to and those places I was unable to go to. But you know, there are two things. One is... We are all human beings, we are all the same and we all know that we cannot achieve everything overnight. Number two is, what's important is not me. Just remember this. What's important is not me. It's more the message of Allah and His Rasul, وسلم, delivered by me or by anyone else. And inshallah for that, I need to stress and reiterate that, you know, I'm, I'm very conscious. If you notice, I quietly walked in and I will quietly walk out. And when the brother says salah will be at 2, my brother, we need to change it. Inshallah, it will be at 1.45. The reason is, I don't, I don't want to prolong this. I just want to speak to you about one reminder. And I've already started that reminder. <laughs> Inshallah, I will get to it in detail. <clears throat> but we don't want to delay the salah. Normally, what time is the salah here? Oh, it's normally at 2? Subhanallah. Okay, then we'll keep it at 2. <laughs> Allah make it easy. Then we'll keep it at two. So uh, I, I don't like to change timings of salah because of someone, because of me. Who am I? I mean, why should you change the time because of me? You know, uh, the time of salah is more important than anything else, according to me. And uh, why should we inconvenience people because of me? So, like I say, my brothers, my sisters, what's important for us, and that's the message I have for you today, is it's the message. Ask yourself, how close am I to Allah? That's what will make you, inshallah, a successful person. And I do know that definitely <clears throat> every one of us has a favorite. I think the battery is going here. So is that telling us that uh, perhaps we speak for a little bit less? We can use this, inshallah. Testing. Okay. 
No wonder why you're giving this to me, inshallah. You can take that away. Okay, so what's of importance, my brothers and sisters, Sheikh, I still like that one, inshallah. I, I still like that one, inshallah. It has, you know... It, it I has, just changed the password. It should be for inshallah. Yeah. Okay, so maybe it's... Okay, shukran. I can turn that Okay, we'll try. I like this, yeah, inshallah. Where is the receiver for this? Can you push it out a bit so that the phone just a little bit? No, it's not. It's not the phone shape. It's 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 just this thing here is catching somewhere there, and it's, it's it has to turn a corner. So that's why it's not. Uh, yeah. Is it possible to to push it out a bit? Oh, it's stuck in the wall. Okay, that's fine, inshallah. That's fine. I can move a little bit forward, perhaps, maybe. Uh, let's see how it goes, inshallah. So, my brothers and sisters, the, the, the point I was raising is, we have to ask ourselves how close we are to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not going to work. It's the battery, shift, nothing else. We have to ask ourselves how close we are to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have to ponder over our link and relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it is strong, then we have succeeded. And yes, every one of us does have a favorite reciter of the Qur'an. Can I ask you, some of you to answer me, who is a favorite reciter of yours? Abdul Basit, Abdul Samad, yes. Anyone else? Sheikh Mahmoud, Khalil al-Husari, yes? Oh, my, subhanallah, alhamdulillah. Yes, anyone else wants to tell us who's their favorite reciter? MashaAllah, Sheikh Yusuf. SubhanAllah. I want to ask you a question. Why? <clears throat> Why is Sheikh Mahmoud Khalil al Husari your favorite reciter? Tell me. The, he says the tajweed of his, right? Shukran. Thank He's you so much. JazakAllah khair. So we all have a favorite reciter, or most of us do. The brother says Sheikh Khalil al Husari, Mahmoud. Sheikh Mahmoud is his name. And I asked him why. He says because of his tajweed, okay? The brother who said Abdul Basit, where are you? Okay, why? He touches your heart, okay. The, the, the brother who said Sheikh Yusuf, yes? It hits your heart, right. Does that mean you are listening to them not for the sake of Allah? Or are you listening to them for the sake of Allah? When you listen to Sheikh Mahmoud Khalil al are you listening to him for the sake of Allah or just for the sake of uh, him, himself? Say it again. No, it's the tajweed, but what's your intention? I'm listening to Sheikh Mahmoud for the sake of Allah, or am I, so, that he can, so that it moves me, or am I listening to Sheikh Mahmoud because of Sheikh Mahmoud himself? Because of the sake of Allah, right? I'm sure the same applies with you. I'm sure the same applies with you, okay? Anyone uh, likes uh, the reader Ra'ad al-Kurdi? Ra'ad al-Kurdi, anyone knows him? Ra'ad bin Muhammad al-Kurdi there. So if the recitation of a certain person affects you in a way that the recitation of other people does not affect you, there is nothing wrong in having a favorite reciter whom you listen to because you feel that it impacts you. You are listening to him, but for the sake of Allah. You follow? There is no contradiction in the two. We all have favorite reciters. When I was young, it used to be Sudais and Shuraim, subhanAllah. A lot of people used to listen and they used to get excited. And as time passed and the, and the technology progressed, we have thousands of reciters on the internet. You have Ukasha Kamini of America. He's originally from Africa, from West Africa. Beautiful reciter. People say, that's my favorite. And we just play one in our car. Do you agree? Sometimes two or three. Does it mean you're a mushrik? You might want to know what does that mean? Because some people say you have to listen to everyone. You can't just have a favor. I think that's wrong. That's wrong. Every one of us by nature, we are affected and impacted by different reciters. We listen to them and sometimes we listen to them alone only because of the sake of Allah, because they draw us. Their recitation is, you know, heart rendering. It brings us closer to Allah. It softens our heart. The way they recite, there is a sheikh who reads beautifully. His name is Sheikh Muhammad Sadiq Al Manshawi. Absolutely amazing. Sheikh Mahmoud Al Khalil Al Husari is known as Sheikh Al Qurra. 
He's one of the top readers of our age. He passed away, rahmatullahi alayhi, many years ago. He taught top readers like Abdul Basit and all of those were his students. Some people, they, they love Sheikh Ali al-Hudayfi in Medina Munawwara. There's nothing wrong with it. On condition that you're listening for the sake of Allah. And it is definitely a given. Nobody would say, I'm not listening for the sake of Allah, but you know, I'm just listening for the sake of this guy. <laughs> that's, that's foolish. So, in the same way that you have a favorite reciter whose recitation you like to listen to because it softens your heart, because it brings you closer to Allah, in the same way you might have a favorite speaker, a favorite lecturer. Not to say the others are bad, but I don't want to listen to them because maybe they doom me when I sit and listen to them. They make me feel like I'm not even a good Muslim and they make me feel like I don't want to do any more good. They make me feel like I'm already in Jahannam or the way they talk makes me sleep. So therefore, I have a favorite speaker who perhaps maybe the way he speaks, the way he encourages me to get closer to who? To Allah. If that is the case, wallahi, there is nothing wrong. Don't let anyone confuse you that you're not allowed to have a favorite speaker. You can. You know, for as long as you are listening to this person for the sake of Allah, nothing wrong. And because they're drawing you closer to Allah, nothing wrong. If they're drawing you closer to themselves, there's something wrong. There is something wrong. If someone says, you know what, I'm a big man. You need to kiss my toes, subhanallah. I'm a big man, you need to treat me like a king. You know, that's very, very dangerous. I'm a big man, I'm better than you. And I can, you know, I'm the one who owns paradise. I will take you to Jannah. So you've got to worship me. You've got to give me money. You've got to give me this, give me that. If that's the case, you are heading in the wrong direction, my brothers, my sisters. But if they are bringing you closer to Allah, so now after you listen to a speech, you started thinking, hey guy, I need to become a better person, man. One day we're going to go and meet Allah then it's, there's nothing wrong. You're happy. It's the right thing you're doing. So there is nothing wrong in having a favorite person whom you want to listen to. And the reason I say this is today, we have people who confuse the ummah sometimes and they start saying, no, you're not allowed to have a favorite because uh, that's shirk. <clears throat> How can you associate partners with Allah? My brother, fear Allah. Don't use that term shirk. For free, meaning for nothing, no reason, no purpose. <clears throat> you need to understand if someone is saying something and they are speaking in a way that makes me a better Muslim, it makes me more conscious, it makes me proud of my Islam, and it makes me come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then by all means, listen to it. I have a favorite speaker. I have a favorite speaker. And sometimes it's not just one, but a few people whom when they talk, wallahi, they move me. I want to cry. I, I, I weep. I go back to Allah and I, I look at myself and say, I need to be stronger. I need to do more. Then inshallah, we're heading in the right direction. However, the point I raised at the beginning and the main point I want to raise now is, my beloved brothers and sisters, remember, all this should draw you closer to Allah. It should make you conscious of who you are. It should make you conscious of the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It should not bring you closer to an individual or to something or to someone. And what you need to also realize is it needs to make you conscious of the day of Qiyamah, the day of judgment, the day when you're going to go back to Allah. What did you prepare? Ya ayyuha alladheena aamanu attaqu Allaha wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghad O you who believe be conscious of Allah and every one of you needs to look into what you have prepared for tomorrow what have you prepared to hand to Allah your deeds your a'mal what have you done have you done good deeds have you done them for the sake of Allah if you've done bad deeds have you sought the forgiveness of Allah if the answer is yes, then indeed you have succeeded. If the answer is no, then we all need more attention, inshallah. And you know what? I can, I can let you in on something else. The same way that we feel encouraged when someone who reminds us in a nice, beautiful, strong way of Allah and His Rasul, the person who is speaking needs to be reminded that the message is for you too. You follow? 
So if I'm talking to you and I make it seem like, you know what guys, you guys all need to read Salah. What about me? I'm already there. Then I've lost. Who am I? أَتَأْمُرُونَ النَّاسَ بِالْبِرِّ وَتَنْسَوْنَ أَنفُسَكُمْ Do you remind people to do good and you forget about yourself? Is that what's happening? If that is the case, then there is something wrong. A person who's speaking, you respect him. A person who's taught you something, you respect him. Even if it's a female, taught you something, you respect her. You respect them, but you must remember they are human beings just like you. They are human beings just like you. They also need help. They also need protection from shaitan. Shaitan also comes to them. So when you make someone as though they are now an angel, they don't make mistakes, they are above whom they actually are, then you need help and they need help too. And when someone portrays himself to be a person who is above those whom he is trying to address, then he needs help first. So this is why it's very dangerous because I do know, I'm talking about myself, for example, I'm weak. Like I told you, I'm just like you. May Allah protect us all and give us Jannah. One day when we get the intercession of Muhammad sallallahu and we are sitting around, inshallah, that howled by the will of Allah, we will be smiling and saying, mashallah, now we've succeeded. Subhanallah, may Allah grant that to us. Amen. But I tell you something very interesting. Yes, there is excitement sometimes because you want to meet someone who perhaps might have uh, helped you somewhere down the line. You need to meet them, you need to see them, you want to perhaps listen to them. Like today, some people might be here because they say, you know, I've, I've benefited, I want to listen to this uh, lecture live, right? There's nothing wrong. From the Sharia perspective, from being close to Allah perspective, there's zero wrong. Zero. Remembering the points that I just raised now. You see? And this is why I say it's tricky because in our excitement sometimes, we tend to lose focus a little bit here and there in the excitement. No big deal. So people say, uh, oh, did you manage to shake the sheikh's hand? And you say, no, huh? well, then you went there for nothing, you know. <laughs> That's not true. You don't need to shake the sheikh's hand because the sheikh's hand will be shaking himself. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. You need to be shaken by the message. The message is more important. If you are shaken by Allah and His Rasul وسلم, and the message that came from them, then definitely you are moving in the right direction. To touch someone's hand, subhanallah. You follow? So someone might say, well, you know what? Uh, it's good to shake hands. Yeah, if you're passing by, mashallah, you shake a hand. And you know, I, I, I'm very... Uh, conscious of this sometimes where people come in, they want to hug you and hug you and kiss you and they want to, you know, get excited about it. Relax. Relax. Leave the kisses for my wife, my brother. <laughs> but I hope you get the point I'm saying. When we have ulama, we have scholars, wallahi, we respect them. And we must, those who've helped us, not just ulama and scholars, we respect everyone here. Your jannah is determined by a few things. Number one, your closeness to Allah. That's hukukullahi azza wa jalla. You have the rights of Allah. Number two is your closeness or your service of the rest of the creatures of Allah. Hukukul ibadi. How did you treat the rest of the people and what happened and how did you talk to them and how did you, uh, you know, communicate with them? How did you treat them? So when you treat people unfairly, even if you think you're reading a lot of salah and so on, I spoke about it in Sydney, that salah, the reward of it goes to someone else. The people whom you've wronged. So, my brothers and sisters, the point being raised is in our excitement, sometimes we start uh, lifting a person higher than the normal human being that he or she is, and that is dangerous. So, you might ask me, why am I saying this today here in Halam? Because I have a chance to say it. It's the truth, it's from inside my heart. I'm just telling you, talking. I didn't prepare a big speech when I came here. But I'm just talking to you as my brothers and sisters to say, guess what? I'm just like you. The same. I remember when I met brother Kamal Saleh. You know who he is? From Sydney. 
He is a spoken word. I was also excited. I show you I'm a human being, right? Because I've heard him quite a few times. I was quite impressed. And I met him. And uh, he's not my son-in-law, by the way. Subhanallah. Some people think he's my son-in-law. No, my son-in-law is another guy. Subhanallah. But he's a very, very good brother. I attended his walima and his nikah, mashallah. And I can tell you something. I was happy. I was excited. When I met, for example, uh, quite a few of these speakers and so on, I'm also happy. I'm excited because, you know what? A lot of the times, some of them are the favorites of my own family members. And I'm glad that Allah used them to help my children. You know, when you are somebody's father, and I know my son is sitting here, but it's okay. When you are somebody's father, I can tell you something. Sometimes you might not impact on them in as big a way as someone else. So when I see a speaker, I say, oh, mashallah, hey, my family will be so happy that I met you, subhanAllah. And you know, they will be. So, you met him, oh, mashallah. Did you give him our salam? Yes, we did, mashallah. And did you meet this guy? Oh, I didn't. There were too many people, subhanAllah. Okay, alhamdulillah, it's okay. We are human beings. I didn't need to. You know, a sheikh is not a hajar aswad. And a hajar aswad is more important to go and kiss. Do you agree? And yet with hajar aswad, you know what we are taught? That there is a greater reward in being considerate when there is a lot of people so that you don't hurt the people because to hurt the people is haram and to kiss the hajar is a sunnah. You follow? It's a very interesting point. And we are less important. We are not as important as the hajar. But you got an opportunity, alhamdulillah, it was good. You didn't. Well, it's okay, never mind. We will meet in Jannah, inshallah. So we all have these favorites. We all get a bit excited. But... Remember to contain that excitement. Don't let it make you start believing things that you know. I remember one day there was a sheikh, a good guy. And the people were so, so, you know, uh, excited about him being there. Someone told me that, you know what, um, this sheikh is so close to Allah, right? It's possible, but who can gauge that? Allah can gauge that, not you and I. I don't know who's close to Allah, who's not. I, I am listening to the message here. I, if the message is, قَالَ اللَّهُ قَالَ الرَّسُولُ And it's a good message bringing me close to Allah and my deen, it's a powerful message. If it is not, it's not a powerful message. That's it. So, uh, they said the sheikh is so close to Allah. He knows, he knows who has wudu and who does not have wudu. Okay, now you're getting a bit excited. Now, I was a bit younger and I... Asked the Shaykh a question. I said, Shaykh, I need to ask you a question in front of everyone. Is it true that you know who has wudu and who has, does not have wudu? So he said, No, I don't know that. Astaghfirullah, that is the unseen. Only Allah knows. And the people who have wudu and don't have wudu are the ones who know. And sometimes those who don't have wudu don't even realize that they don't have wudu. But Allah knows they don't have wudu. So there are rules and regulations governing that too. So the brother next to me told me, no, a few moments ago, he told the brothers on one side that you guys go and make wudu. How did he know that they don't have wudu and the other guys have wudu? So I said, Sheikh, how did you know that these people have wudu and these people they don't have wudu and these have wudu? He said, I didn't know, but these guys are sitting here from three hours and these guys just came now. So he says, I know that if three hours, most probably your wudu is over. So I told them, go and make wudu. So the Sheikh clarified it. But you know what? The guy sitting next to me still told me, now nah, he's just being humble. <laughs> now being humble doesn't mean you follow Imam Ahmad bin Humble. <laughs> Obviously. But it means that the person is just trying to be like sort of, you know, cool about things. And I said, no, wallahi you're wrong. Wallahi you're wrong. Now, now this is a limit beyond which you don't cross. We, we cleared it for you in front of you. I cleared it. Sheikh doesn't know all of this. This is called going beyond the limits. Going beyond the limits. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. That's why uh, if you notice today I'm speaking to you and I'm sure you can feel that I'm just casual myself. Because I want you to know and I want this message to go far and wide that you know what my brothers, my sisters, I'm just exactly a brother and a sister. You know, meaning a brother to the brothers and the sisters. That's who I am. Subhanallah. And we, we should not uh, raise those who come to remind us about the deen beyond their level. And at the same time, 
we should understand that we should respect each other. The same way you want to respect me, respect these people. They are all VIPs, everyone here. These children here, seated here. That little boy with a bottle, may Allah bless him. And I can tell you what, they are all VIPs. We should greet each other. That's what makes the ummah. Right? It doesn't mean because there's one person we consider important, he's the only guy we will greet nicely. No. Your family, your brother is a VIP. Your sister is a VIP. Your mother-in-law is a VIP. Mashallah. <laughs> it's not so easy, but you need to treat her with really... And guess what? She needs to treat you too with utmost respect because you are a VVIP. Mashallah. May Allah grant us happiness. So I hope that my message was uh, direct, straight. There's nothing wrong in having a favorite, absolutely on condition that you bear certain points in mind that we spoke about today. And inshallah, if that is bringing you closer to Allah and His Rasul, then you're heading in the right direction. And inshallah, remember to love one another for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I enjoyed myself here and I still feel the bond, mashallah. I like the size of the masjid and I love you, my brothers and sisters in, in Allah. And I do see the excitement sometimes, but try and contain it, inshallah. Just remember that uh, we should be excited by the fadl of Allah. قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا وَخَيْرٌ مِّمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ Allah says, tell them, O Muhammad wasallam, that it's the virtue of Allah and the mercy that should make you excited. It's better than everything that you can gather. If you've gathered the wealth of the whole world, but you don't have the virtue and mercy of Allah, you have nothing. And if you don't have anything material, but you have the virtue and mercy of Allah, you have everything. So inshallah, the virtue and mercy of Allah is the closeness to Allah, the closeness to your deen, the consciousness of the akhirah, to work on yourself and those around you, to resolve matters with those whom you may have closest to you to start with and then with the rest. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. Give us all Jannatul Firdaus. May Allah give us reason to smile and to be happy. أقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته